Welcome back to my YouTube channel again. Today, hopefully, we're doing the last episode of Vintage Reads, and we'll be able to see all about the stereo read today. Yes, that is, hopefully, unless I don't fall asleep, so I may be the last person awake halfway through. <laughs> but we'll just jump right into it as I grab all the leftover stuff that I had sitting around, including some vintage clarion fiber cane reeds synthetic reeds Lean more mod of course you know what fiber cell is these are an old version but we'll get right into it so what we have right now is what is called a stereo reed this is a tenor sax version so what is so special about the stereo reed I guess I should say that twice. Stereo read, 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 read. Interesting design. Wow, that's really, that's really cut in there really well. Wow. This is a two tenor. Nice smooth cut. Yeah, it's a little bit wavy on the end, but. Who knows how old these reeds are? Don't I've had them for a while. It's kind of amazing how they cut this into the wood. Wow. That's pretty deep too. Let's take a look at the cut here. First the uh wow. Let's see here. Better in black, yeah, it is. Left side is a little bit not as thick as the right side, but it's pretty good. But the middle is probably right about here, just slightly offset. Looking on the light table now, pretty good cut at the first segment top there. Um, good bell curve type cut. Slightly thicker on the right side, just a little bit, not much. But it looks like a pretty good cut read. And veins are somewhat consistent throughout, so it's kind of level cut with the cane itself. Let's take a look at the second one. Take a look at the last one. This is really impressive how deep this cut is into the cane to put the name on. Wow. Yep. This one, the right side is a little bit thinner than the left side. The cut, once again, fairly good first segment on the top. Second segment, the bell curve is shifted to the right a bit. This side, again, is a little bit thicker, even though it's not as tall here. But it's a pretty good cut, not too bad. That, once again, is a stereo reed. Interesting case for five reeds. It's cr is cradled in there vertically. And that's a stereo reed. Next, we're going to take a look at these popular reeds. I think that may be the type of wood they use. I don't know. No, it says from fine French cane. Made from seasoned fine French cane. Designed and manufactured by McCaffert USA. French American Reeds Manufacturing Company. Broadway, New York. Oh, more on the back. Same as before, 12 and a half clarinets. Popular reed. Fine French Cane Design Manufacturer in McCaffrey, USA. And there we go. Th this is actually, huh, they, they cut into the reed. Wow, that, that's a, a lot of work there, even just for a machine to do that over and over again. 
It's like the stereo read. Notice the edges aren't aren't square either. They kind of cut off the edges a bit, round them a little bit. Similar to the vibrator read, except not as severe of a cut, rounding of a cut. Uh, over here, we're looking at this. It's not too bad. The right side is a little bit thin and left. This looks like it's probably a smaller cane, the way it was cut. But when you think about it, when they cut cane, cane has a certain diameter. The smaller diameter you have, the more of an arc you're going to have in the cane when it gets cut. I really do like the veins in this. They're consistent throughout. So it's a, the cut on the cane is fairly flat. Uh, first segment's okay. Second segment's kind of like a blob. I should actually try playing this. So I'm going to guess it plays okay. I'll probably shave the edges of it a little bit, soften the edges a little bit, but it looks like a pretty good read. Pull out another one here on the top. Once again. Amazing how much inscribing they did, the machine inscribing that. Must have just been rolled on and pushed into the reed. I'm guessing with heat. So then got basically slightly burnt inside. Really weird. This one's kind of off balance looking at the cut. Height is lower on the right than left. You can see on the right-hand side how it's cut to the side. So it was cut flat, then they trimmed the sides. And there's a little segment here in the middle that's perfectly flat. Now, it looks like it sticks out, but it doesn't. On light table, this one's a little bit better cut than last. First segment's pretty good. You got a good bell curve on it. Light on this side, pretty good on this side. Probably plays pretty well. And that's our popular reads. 15 cents a read. When was that? I, I don't remember what I played in, paid in the 80s for reads, but I think it was far more than that. Next, we have this brand. Yeah, I can't really read it myself. LaCroix Paris, one dozen B-flat tenor sax reeds. Makes you think it's Swiss, but it's Paris again. Isn't everything made in Paris? You can read it here. Take a look at these two buttons. Ooh. Left one here, this is really a thin cut. It comes down to nearly, nearly a point on the side. Middle's in the middle, but this is, you can see it's, they didn't really take in consideration the curvature, the outer curvature of the cane. It was cut in the wrong area of the cane. Um, well, the cane itself wasn't round, I'm sure. Sure, we could probably figure out the arc of this and figure out why it was off, but hey, not for me to do. This one's cut fairly consistently left to right. I'll put both on the table. <clears throat> and the one on the right, the one that had a consistent cut, has a good first segment, has a nice bell curve in the middle, light on either side, as you can probably see. That's a pretty good cut. Second one is a little bit off. The bell curve, you can see it looks like it has two bell curves, kind of spikes up and spikes up again. But that one probably plays okay, I'm guessing. Veins look pretty consistent. That's LaCroix.
I think the last time I looked at these was probably six years ago. Next, we have a couple boxes of these. E. Picards, I guess. Clarinet, solo, and opera. I'm not very good at French anymore. In other concerts, Conservatoire, France, Paris. Is that, oh, I was going to say, I thought that said like Golden Cane. Right underneath it says Golden Cane. <laughs> Extra. That's um, patented, isn't it? Anything in the back? Nope. Regular box. This is another one of those canes where it's cut, a deep cut into the top of the cane husk. Wow. That's pretty amazing. These are sticking together. Old age. This one's That's pretty amazing how they cut that into the wood. <laughs> wow, what a difference. This one's a really thick cut, as you can see, compared to the other one next to it. Tall in here, kind of medium, tall on that side. This one's thin. This was the one on the right. The cane, the tube itself was a smaller diameter than this one, I can tell, because it's a, the arc is more than on the left. Let's see how it's cut on the light table. What hardness is this? Ones, wow. In this case, first segment's pretty good and light. Second segment, there's a little bit of a bell curve. This is probably more like a two, two and a half, I'd say, not a one, just looking at it. But pretty good tip. Pretty amazing what, how they cut these reeds. Paris, France. That's your golden cane. Next up, we're gonna look at a synthetic reed, the clarion fiber cane. Number three, alto sax. Should be, it should be consistent. <laughs> it doesn't look, I was expecting perfection, but it's like the right side seems not as tall as the left side. It looks like they made cylinders of this, like they did regular cane and just kind of reproduced the, the method, production method, and they screwed up the cutting of it slightly. Wonderful. Of course, here you don't really see veins. Probably see layers more than veins, but I mean, it's fairly consistent. There's no real big bell curve on it. Of course, being synthetic, it could react differently than cane. So it probably doesn't flex like cane does. Um, I should next time pull up my alpha sack, give this a play if I remember. So that's Clarion Fiber Cane. I'm not going to open this one. This is a betcha. There's no other reed like it. Synthetic, see through, as you can see. Betcha is a plastic reed. It does away with ordinary reed troubles, helps in development of superior embouchure. Its controlled frequency holds up the pitch. More sanitary, never gets soggy. Always uniform in tone, practically permanent. Amazing. Doesn't even, I got more of these actually. Here's one that's out, but it's, here's another one. This one's uh, white as you can see. In fact, that says future.
futurity read. This one says in it. The wrong reads in it, or maybe they changed it. Hey, look, McCaffrey's. That is who made those other popular reads or the other ones we just saw a short time ago. So let's look at both these. We have one right here. Here's a betcha read. Oh, look at that. You can actually see grinding marks. It's like there's a cylinder that cut this and it wasn't even straight. The cylinder's not even straight this way. It's like the cylinder's offset. So the grinding wheel was here. It wasn't here. It was offset like this. So I grinded two reeds at the same time. Yeah, it's consistent here. This is definitely consistent. That's good. Let's see what it looks like up here. Oh, look at that. You can see a bell curve in there. So it seems to be a good cut, too. Good design. Wow. Interesting. What is this? It's a two. Oh, that's interesting. This is actually cut into, like those other cane reeds, cut into the top of the material. That's cool. Next, you'll look at this one. Future Futurity McCaffrey's Read USA, US patent numbers and stuff. So two. Um, fairly consistent. I don't know what to do about this. <laughs> it's clear. Is this plain old clear? Wow, you can see a file pattern on it, though. Can we see the file pattern on it? Let's take a look. Huh. Can't really see the file pattern on it. Well, that's maturity reads and betcha reads. Next, we're going to look at this synthetic read. Clarinet read, one and a half, Lulin, another white one. Looks like this is just form from a mold, just injection molding kind of looks like. Fairly consistent. You can actually see, I don't know if you can see here in the middle here, where it looks like it gets injected mold and this is the tab right on the end here that they cut off and kind of sand down a bit right on the edge here this is probably injection molded wow because you can see the flow lines inside the cane itself versus being a solid material then grind it down and it's not really cut it's just kind of like smooth transition down there wow interesting Nothing from the light table, you can see. Wow. Yeah, I'll look this up sometime. Of course, then we have some in packaging here called Golden Tone. I assume Selma USA. Plastic Reed. H&A Selma Inc. So that's when it was still... Henry and, and Alexander Selmer Inc. That's what H and A is. Henry and Alexander Selmer. Wow, well, golden tones. Next, golden tone. Next, we're gonna do fiber cell. We know about these. These are more current ones. I uh, had some pre-production ones at one time. Well, then the dust settling in there. Consistent cut there. Grinded really good. Medium. Good cut uh, or grind, whatever. You can see it looks like a good uh, cut there for the what hardness is it? It was medium. It's probably pretty good. I actually use synthetic reeds when I play test instruments a lot. And if you if you play testing, you don't have time to warm up the reed. So just using a good synthetic reed really pays off once in a while. First, you end up playing some and not playing some. 
So this is a berry, tenor sack soft. Gonna see how it's cut in a way. Look like on a light table, nothing. Completely see through. Even when I look at it, I just it's just kind of foggy, fog and light a bit. Hmm. Nicely made though. Consistently made, probably. They probably have a long tray, fill up the tray, and then start machining it, chopping the pieces, start machining it down. That's probably what they do. It's nicely machined on the edges. That's very. Remember these? I started using these back in the uh, when I was in high school marching band. And these could actually be from that era too. I remember one lasted a very, very long time. Let's see if we can get it out of this thing. Look at this. Plastic, black plastic covered reed. Plastic cover read. This is a four. Wow. So it's, a, so it's a regular cane read because it's it's actually cut pretty good. Except the arc is uh kind of tall, but plastic covered cane read. Pretty amazing. Thirty five years later, probably. Anything on here? <laughs> Can't see a thing. Got a whole new box of them, I guess. I hope I put that in right. Pull them off from this side, I guess, put it in backwards. There we go. Doesn't quite fit. Ah. To open new Rico Defense Pack box, guess you should have read that first, huh? Old box or front panel facing up? Well, then, how do you read the instructions? Oh. Open box at thumb notch, which was this side. Slide tray one third to halfway out the box. Apply slight pressure to sides of box. Slide read from bottom of tray with slight upward pressure. Hmm. Nice concepts, huh? That's plastic cover reeds, black plastic covering five real reeds made by Rico products. Pretty interesting. Next, we have some black line reeds. I have a whole bunch of these laying around in these holders. These are tenor sacks, apparently. I swear it says Shanghai on the back of it. That can't be right. My eyes must be deceiving me. <laughs> it says France on this one. <laughs> just... Oh, I guess it does say France. I guess my eyes were deceiving me. Anyways, oh. No wonder you don't see these reeds anymore. Kind of inconsistent cuts. This is a little bit lower than that side. Well, it's kind of okay, I guess. And a little bit lower, a little bit higher, but it's not flat on the back. That's weird. The cane bark is actually overlapping, overextending past the end of the cut. How do they do that? So we have here fairly consistent cuts, good, good, good vein distribution. Um, but as, 
Yeah, it shows up in the video too. You can see the different areas here. The first area there, second area here, third area there, and it gets deeper from there. It's nothing, usually you want some lighter cuts on the side, but it depends upon, are these supposed to be three and a half? So I would probably shave these a bit on the sides to make them a little bit more playable for me. Well, that's black line. Last but not least, ideal SML. Shasha Maraguay, Paris. Open up the box saying, why in the world is it like this? How cool is that? Really cool packaging. Those sax reads. Well, SML saxophone. Pull a couple out. Backside says Audio Paris, SML two and a half France. Nothing on the top, regular cut. But ends, it's kind of thick here, but it looks okay. This is thinner here. Looks like an okay cut, maybe just a tad lower on this side, but probably fine. Take a look in the light table. Good veins on the right hand side, left hand side, the veins looks like the looks like when this one was cut flat, this other one was cut kind of at a slight angle. So the veins kind of pop out and disappear. Um, pretty good cut going across left to right. You can see this has some cutting on the side, which it should, but it's not cutting on this side. There's none on this one either. Looks okay. We need a little bit of work probably. That is SML. in a gigantic box, as you can see. This is actually clarinet. Let's open this one up. Whoa, a whole bunch of them all over the place. <laughs> They're too small for the holder. This is SML sax one here, but these are clearly clarinet reads. Number three. Oh, one on the right is really brown. Now let's see at the see the end here how brown it is. See that? You can actually see it. See the veins and everything are getting brown up and down the entire reed. I'm clearly seeing there, at least here, here it is. A little further back of the light. You know, compared to this one's a lot more white. You can see up here is darker. There's a lot more dark streaks going all the way down it. I can't quite get the lighting correct. We'll have to figure out why that is. Of course, it is organic. Look at these two canes on the light table. Right one, you're seeing what I'm seeing, really, when I look at the reeds on the table. Um, this one is skewed off to the side, thin on this side, thicker on that side. Really no bell curve. This one is kind of cross-segmented here. I would Thin out the sides a bit more before playing it. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, there we go now. I've run out of reeds now. I'm sure there's a few stragglers in there, but it's a big box I had. A whole bunch of reeds. I didn't pull them all out. I'll probably have a couple more boxes of these in there, but as you can see how big these are. Really big compared to a book. Look at that. Book size. Put this in your clarinet case. <laughs> Twenty-five clarinet reeds. This will—I don't know any case this will fit in. It'll fit in an external soft case, maybe depending on how big the pockets are. Holy cow! This—I uh, can't believe they put clarinet reeds in something like this. Even saxophone reeds. Come on, this is probably well. This would probably fit like Selmer cases where they have the squares, big square segment in there, but you'll. Put five boxes of reed in there, and that's it. That's all the room we would have. These are actually gigantic. Probably nice reeds, but just can't put them in a case like this. Anyways, I want to thank you for listening to my ramblings. Any questions or comments, put them down below. Don't forget to give a thumbs up, like, subscribe, share. You know, you got to love knowledge, got to love life. You got to love saxophone and clarinet reeds. Even though the boxes may be way too big to use. Interesting, isn't it? Anyways, we'll see you next time.